Welcome. This screencast is designed to accompany the FET simulation titled Reactions and Rates. The simulation can be found at the website on the screen or follow the link below. This screencast will walk you through some of the basic elements of the simulation. Please note that to use the simulation on your own computer, you'll have to have Java installed. As we begin looking at this, we're going to start with the single tab collision right here. We also want to look at the second reaction where we have a green molecule of A reacting with a molecule of BC. We'll also open up the energy view, which shows us the energy profile as the reaction goes from reactants to products. We'll also look at the separation view, which will show us the distance between the two atoms relative to their position on the energy diagram. Let us start by pulling down this plunger approximately halfway. And what we notice is that the energy over on the right side begins to increase. If we let this thing go, the molecules will start moving and collisions will occur. We can look here and ask ourselves, first of all, if a reaction takes place. If we notice, we always have just a single atom of A and a molecule of BC stuck together, so it appears that no reaction is currently taking place. So let us reload the launcher. This time, we'll pull the plunger down just a little bit further so that we have a bit more energy in the system, and then when we let go, we'll see what happens. As I'm sure you're noticing, this time we seem to have a reaction taking place where the atom of A will react, and all of a sudden we will have B and C separate, and just the atom of C come shooting off. Now, it appears that this time we've now gone offline, and we no longer have a reaction occurring since the two molecules don't seem to be colliding. As we watch these, we can ask ourselves whether or not a reaction happens every single time a collision occurs. As we saw there, the molecules definitely collided. and again, but still we have the single free atom of A and we have the molecule of BC. Now let's look at raising the temperature just a little bit and see what that does to the system. So using the slide bar here, we can increase the overall temperature just a little bit. And so what do we notice about the molecules? Well, it seems that they've now started to move just a bit faster. We also notice that the total energy of the system did increase. So we can ask ourselves, is there a reaction every time there's a collision? Based on what we just saw, there was a collision and a reaction, and that time a collision without a reaction. Let's look and see what happens if we lower the temperature a bit. So here we see the molecules now slowing down, and so we could ask ourselves, is a collision likely to lead to a reaction in this particular setting or not? Feel free to pause and think about that question. So now let's consider the many collisions tab. And here let's again start by choosing the correct uh, reaction with a green A reacting with a molecule of BC. Let's also make sure that we have our energy diagram open up here. And then let's start adding some molecules of A to the system. And we can add some molecules of BC to the system. And then if we open up a strip chart, we actually can see how much material of each is present. And then we can see the change over time as these things are allowed to mix together. And so do we see any reactions that are occurring? So looking at the system, we seem to have relatively flat lines here in the strip chart suggesting that no reaction has actually occurred. Well, let's add in some more A and see if perhaps we can get a reaction to occur this way. So we see that going up off the scale, so let's adjust that so it fits. Oh, and now it looks like we have a slight decrease in A and in BC and an increase in the amount of C and AB that's present. And so now it appears that there has been some reaction that's actually occurred. Well, let's go and raise the temperature and see if we can increase that. Again, we're gonna see an increase in total energy and this time we'll stop about there. And we can let the reaction proceed. And now we see a much more dramatic shift as these molecules begin to react a little bit more and we see a continued decrease in the amount of A and BC that's present, and an increase in the amount of AB and C that's present.
as we watch this, we can ask ourselves, well, once a product is formed, does it always stay a product? And how would we know that that's the case? Also, it would be good to ponder, well, why is this line, this green line, listed as total average energy as opposed to total energy like it was in the single collision case? And what do you think might happen if we added some more AB to the mixture? Well, perhaps that would be something good for you to try as we've come towards the end of our screencast. Hopefully the screencast has given you a sense of what the FET reactions and rate simulation has to offer. You should now be able to effectively use the simulation to explore kinetics more and answer the remaining questions provided to you. Please note that the answers to the follow-up questions cannot be directly found within the simulation, but that you'll actually have to apply your chemistry understanding. Thank you again for watching this screencast, and you can go to the simulation using the link below.